this one uh this one's gonna be a little interesting uh recording wise um in the summer tottenham brought in a set piece coach a somewhat renowned uh set piece coach with a, an interesting history um originally i was thinking i was going to do a big in-depth look at his history of set pieces but those articles already exist probably better than i could do them so i will link stuart reed's work for you to check out and what we're going to do instead is we're going to have a look at what we've been up to just in pre-season now obviously he's only had a couple of weeks to work with the team um uh, but I think there's a fair amount you can do in terms of attacking set pieces in a short amount of time. Defensive set pieces, I think, are definitely something that takes a bit longer. Um, so we're going to do reverse chronology here. This is the most recent corner. This was against Rangers. The camera angle is an abomination. Um, at the start, we can see the Sun is the taker and Kuliseski is the player in support. Let's get some uh, let's get some pens going for the hell of it. Kuliseski is the player in support, and then you have. As a result of that, one Rangers player is drawn over. As the corner uh, is about to be taken, Kulisewski is making this run, like he's about to become sort of a near, near post target, but then he doesn't take that route. He then curves back out, where he's going to be a target on the edge of the box. As the ball goes into the box now, we can see, so here's Kulisewski, here's the run he made. Um, and he is here, well here, in fact, <laughs> uh, in case a loose ball drops to him here. Everyone else, we haven't seen where they've come from. We're going to see that in a minute, I think. Everyone else is kind of in a more or less straight line with a bit of a um, a drag at the back. And this is one of the sort of repeating elements of, of VO's um setups is that it's less about here's the one player who's going to score from this particular situation it's more about um here are two or three different options and we're going to set up because weird things can happen um at a set pieces so spacing is really big for him and you can see let me remove the line you can see even though it's blurry here um it's kind of like when we talk about when we're analyzing open play, right? Your occupation of lanes, your occupation of zones, stretching the opposition. It's kind of less about stretching the opposition, although a little bit um, when it comes to um, set pieces. It's more about um, having someone in every place for every bounce kind of thing. Okay, so now we're on the opposite side of the pitch. We can see the setup. So again, we have uh our taker here he is and we have our support player and then we have two groups of three and then another one uh and he is inside we're going to take a look at the opposition setup so rangers in blue now they, they have, have a zonal wall over here of uh one two three four players and then i think the other one in that area is man marking he's man marking benton core and then they have an additional uh, three to three in man marking here towards the edge of the area. And then they have one more man marker and he is keeping an eye on the short option. Okay. Sessignon, I think it is, makes that fake run again to get as if he's going to run near post and then becomes someone who can pick up loose balls on the edge of the box. And then... What do we have here? Well, we have our first group of three. Remember that they, they were here. They're dispersing towards the near post. Um, as, by the way, is Bentenko, who was the man inside the zonal marking. He's also going near post. Uh, and then you have our three from deeper areas. Where are they going to go? They are making slightly later runs. But we can see that they are also sort of folding in more like far post, right? But they're all folding into this line, the same line that we saw at the as a result of the first corner. So again, we're starting off with um, starting off with these groupings, and then we're ending up with this. Let's see if we can get a good this line, right, where you're covering all the way from 
beyond the near side of the six yard box, a little bit of a droop to the far side of the six yard box. And then you've got, well, in this situation, two uh, deeper players because look at look at how Rangers, I can keep mixing up my colors, I'm gonna go pink now. Look at how Rangers have followed all of their men into this area, right? So this area is where all of the defenders are, therefore black this time, this is this is a free zone. So if the ball bounces out this area, Spurs are going to have an advantage. But what they're looking for here, and the advantage of, or one of the many advantages of this line of attackers here, is they are hoping to try to get a flick on uh, where the ball is here now. So it's going to loop over to the far post because as well as the fact that Rangers have been compressed into this line, uh, the same line that Spurs are making, they're also, I think, heavy on the front because more Spurs players have run to the front than have run to the back. And also more Spurs, or the, the ones who went to the front went there earlier and therefore has drawn more attention that way. So the ball gets knocked on. Um, and as you can see, three Spurs players against one here at the far post trying to get on that ball. All right, next corner, again, exact same setup. Same fake run. Same movement from the groupings, although I think maybe they've actually split. I think I've said all three from the... That I think I said all three from the far post went to the near post and all three from deep went to the far post, right? This crossing over motion. But I think there might actually be a mix up there where those groups are splitting within themselves. Uh, but for the most part, it's that crossover motion that really creates all that kind of space. And again, you can see, trying to get that flick on, trying to get those spare plays at the far post. I think it kind of comes to Hoybier here. But he it bobbles in front of him and he can't quite get the read or the control on it and goes out. Now we have not a corner, now we have uh, an indirect free kick. Um, let's see what happens here, I'm curious. So you get a late support run from one of the players going towards the ball here. You've got um, a run from the sort of far left side, the wing back, making a wing back type run. You're beginning to see some movement here in the targets way before, like uh, as Sun is lifting his hand, I think this is Kane, is like beginning to make this kind of run. Yeah, starts offside, curves, comes back onside, or is trying to get back onside. Maybe he's early after all. So not a ton, and then the ball is, is beyond him. But you can see that he's he's at least free of his marker. I don't know if he's onside. You can see the general idea here. Um, bunching them at the far post, running, doing a curved run back onside, and then near side of the defenders. All the while, there's this other movement going on as well to distract and occupy. I think there might be Dyer. I described it as Kane. I think Kane is here. Okay, again, we don't have a great view. We have our support player. It's probably going to be the same setup. Let's have a look when we get over there. No, this time it's played short. And I think then played back to Sonia, who's isolated. And again, we can't really see what's actually going on in the box. But I think the idea was probably for a cross to come here. He ends up dribbling into the, into the box. Um, I suppose at the very least what this does is keeps the opposition guessing that it's not the exact same thing via the exact same method every time. Okay, next one. Got our two groupings of three. Our one who's not actually on the keeper, but is sort of threatening to be on the keeper. We can't see our support player, but they might be about here. There they are making that, and it's Kulisevsky, I think, making that same. Oh, I'm going to run here. No, I'm not going to run here, and now I'm ready. Our converging groups run into opposite ends. And I think the ball hits a Rangers player here. And despite the fact that, it, you know, it's hit a Rangers player, it's still nearly come free at the far post. Again, it's it's kind of behind us here. And Rangers haven't been quite so drawn in towards their own six-yard book this time. So they're a bit more alive to a loose ball here. Whereas maybe on a different play, that could have gone loose to Kulusevsky, uh, making that a fake support run. 
Same situation again. Here come the movements, same movements every time. Trying to get something, this time the ball goes into the middle. So this time the ball goes into the middle and it's um, better occupation from Rangers on that play. I don't know if the ball was over hit or we're just mixing up the targets there. So Hill's the taker, but we've got that same thing. You can see how the groupings, one has dispersed the near post already. You've got a bit more of a, uh, a delayed reaction from the three to trying to get to the far post. Uh, but this time, and this is interesting, this is kind of what I was talking about before, right? With how, um, although you might have, hey, let's try to get Dyer to knock it on at the near post to Kane at the far post, the others aren't just there for the sake of distraction or just twiddling their thumbs, they're spaced out. So although the ball isn't knocked onto the far post, which is kind of the primary plan, um, it comes loose to Perisic. And again, because Rangers have been, they have to worry not just about this one place the ball is going in the first place, right? They have to worry about the run from deep. They have to worry about the uh, multiple different targets at the near post, the at least one target at the far post, the support play, right? So again, like we were talking about earlier, like with open play, getting the opposition to defend a wide and broad and deep area of play. Therefore, a loose ball comes to Perisic and he's not just immediately pounced on by 100 defenders. And he goes through this very acrobatic effort um, and can't get it on, but never mind. Man, Perisic is fucking ripped. Oh my days, what a... What a specimen he is, eh? Oh, I've just sworn on a YouTube video. Okay, know. it looks like another corner with the same setup. Um, maybe this time it's uh, not finding a Spurs player at all, but you can see those same movements, that well, that, at least that same result, this, uh, this line of width. All right, now we're going back in time to the Sofia game, but you do have that same setup, right? Here's your group of three. Here's your guy hanging out um close ish to the keeper now you've only got a group of two over here interesting i wonder if that's because it's getting towards the end of the game and it's a more defensive setup um and here's your support player and i wonder if he is gonna make a run that looks something like that let's find out it's a uh, actually the run is a lot less subtle <laughs> actually it's just hey let's just run here maybe that's something that's developed over time right maybe the severe game happens and it's like okay let's actually make that a more subtle movement to arrive in the same place um you have the same sort of motions from the targets in the box and the ball is going to go not via um the near post but it seems direct to the far post where okay um the player is not unmarked, but you've got a one versus one at the far post, and I think that's not bad at all. Um, because because players lose aerial jewels sometimes, right? Here we are against the uh, the team Korean League hybrids thing. Um, little difficult to tell exactly what's going on, but I think oh think we have a pretty similar setup. Maybe not exactly the same. So we don't have our support player over here. Um, again, we're sort of doing reverse chronologies. So we're seeing the development. The groupings are left to find. You do still have your um, near the keeper player. Um, you do still have what seems to be a mixture of far post players going near post and near post players going far post, but a little less, little less um, worked there. And again, the result is kind of that line, but we're, it's less it's less well spaced. You're getting less distance, and you're getting more grouping together, and and you, that situation where if you put five players in a space, and the opposition also put five players in the space, you just get this huge bundle, um, and that's competed for. And then there's there's no uh, good spacing for the loose ball. Well, there is in terms of deeper possession and not getting counted on but not like immediately in the opposition box so now actually this corner you see more of that same role so player near the keeper grouping of three grouping of three uh yeah. richarlison starts far post and ends far post so a little less nuance it still nearly comes to him though this is yeah this is a direct to far post motion again this set this more familiar setup from the the future games uh, yeah, this this one amused me. So this is this is a uh, I think pretty uniquely uh, a VO thing is targets in the box here here maybe there's another one 
just completely fleeing the scene entirely at the beginning of the corner. It's incredible stuff. Um, what's more incredible is that it often works, right? Two players are being drawn out of their own box to defend the crescent, like, and and therefore deprioritizing the six yard box. It's quite something. So that's been the theme and the play at um, at corners, and you can kind of see maybe less development, less subtlety from indirect free kicks. What I'm going to do here is have a quick look at a direct free kick from last season. Yeah, you know where this is going. What an incredible kit, by the way. I, I need to, let me know if you uh, if you find where these are on sale. I might just have to buy a fake. I'm an idiot. I should have bought one um, earlier. So what interests me about this? This is this is last season. This is pre bringing in um, a recognised set piece coach. You do have a very um, vo esque um, fake wall here. Couple of players um, shielding the keeper's view and disrupting the opposition's wall by standing here. Um, you also have some not terrible support positions. So maybe this could have been a pass. Maybe this could have been a pass. Maybe this could have been a pass. None of them are played. No, maybe none of them are that useful, but they are threats that the opposition have to be aware of. Um, you have got this far post person here who could potentially be making a run to a chipped ball or something like that. So there is some sophistication going on here. The more important thing is what Kane does. And you kind of all know what Kane does, right? Let's have a look at this trajectory of this ball if we can. Yep, that's right. It goes way over and way wide. What Kane is trying to do here and what most players are trying to do from most free kicks, and what basically only James Ward-Prowse ever really does on a consistent basis, is um, make uh, alternating travels through four different directions, right? So he's trying to get it over the wall and under the crossbar, and he's trying to get it uh, round the wall, and inside of the post. And he's trying to beat the keeper. So he's trying to create this perfect, exact, beautiful arc. Um, is he going far post here? Maybe he's going far post here. So maybe he's not um, too worried about getting around the right-hand side from Kane's protective of the wall. But he's he wants to go over the wall so the flight of the ball is slightly disguised at least. So he's trying to go over the wall and then down and then left with sufficient speeds to beat the keeper through momentum all in a single strike of the ball um, to inch perfection uh, with moderate stakes and uh, he doesn't even get close to doing that at all. Sanchez is completely unbothered and this is something that we've seen again and again. All right, so on to pre-season. Again, we're, we're reverse chronology, uh, which makes more sense this time, to be honest. Um, so we have a bit more presence of Spurs players in their neon socks in front of the Roma wall. Um, we also have two people threatening to take the set piece. Um, which is good and useful, but you will, we will eventually have to see someone other than Kane take one of those free kicks for it to be worth anything that there's another player standing there. But still a positive development so far, in my opinion. Um, just as the kick is about to be taken, the Spurs players all converge into a very tightly packed wall in this hole, blocking the keeper's sight. Right, the keeper's trying to see the ball. This line to the ball is here. You can't see it. And then as the ball is kicked, they duck or disperse or both. And here's the interesting slash exciting bit for me. Kane shoots low. Uh, not low enough. Maybe not wide enough. He shoots it into the shins of, yeah, it looks like actually the furthest player. So it looks like the path he's looking for on the ball here is keeping it low the whole time, out and in. 
he fails at that. And Tottenham fans worldwide groan and say, oh my God, it's still Harry Kane. We've brought in a set-piece coach and Kane's still taking them. Um, but he is so much, so much closer here to getting this wide and in, which again is only two motions than he was before trying to get it over and under and wide and in all in the same kick, right? Let's move on. So against Rangers, again, you've got these long line of Spurs players hanging about. Again, you've got two different potential takers. And again, if Kane just takes it every time, that doesn't really offer you anything. Again, we have this late motion as the kick is being taken from the Spurs place to form this quick tight wall in front of the keeper who's unsighted as a result. And again, you have Kane uh, not shooting the ball that high. Um, in fact, he shoots it where Eric Dyer happens to be crouching his head to and Harry Kane blasts his head off and Eric Dyer is dead now. Rest in peace. Um, Again, I think that um, it's easy to be frustrated. Oh my goodness, we're not even beating our own wall now. But I think a lot of the ideas here are really strong. Um, if Dyer ducks a little bit lower, or if Kane gets this a little bit higher, or if Dyer is a little bit more lateral in one way or the other, I think this is a really threatening shot because I think this is coming in fast and hard as Dyer will know very well and I think this is coming on within the width of the of the goal and I think it's coming into the keeper unsighted not saying that this is a definite goal if it beats Dyer but I think it's much more threatening than what we've been putting on so far which again is Harry Kane trying to bend this round and over and under and into the top right corner every time one more here it is two takers a wall that forms in front of the keeper's vision at the last moment. Kane shooting not all the way over and round and down and in, but over our own wall, or sorry, low through our own wall to try to get it near post of the keeper. And what happens is that actually succeeds. Now, you're going to say, oh, but Nathan, it was deflected and that's true and that's definitely helped and it's definitely made it more successful and there's definitely luck involved there and Harry Kane has definitely scored exactly two, three kicks of which both have been deflections, right? But this is the system working. This is simplifying the kick taker's role. This is obscuring the keeper's sight. Um, yeah, I think... If you want me to answer the question, is Harry Kane um, like a good taker of traditional free kicks, then I don't mind saying, no, he's not. I don't mind saying he's bad at free kicks. I'm not completely convinced of that because I think that you need a larger sample than even the ones provided so far, right? Don't get upset at me just yet. Um, but I don't mind accepting that he's bad at, at taking traditional free kicks the way they're taken by most people. But could Harry Kane be a good taker of VO free kicks, which are aimed low and hard and obscured by teammates? I think he may well be. Maybe. We're going to be keeping an eye on set pieces over the course of the season. We're going to have more videos like these, except I'll actually be able to press play on them and let them run. Um, we're going to look at matches and players. Videos like these on patreon.com slash the extra inch.